Hello, let's be honest, this isn't the face you're used to seeing on this YouTube channel. My name's Alfie Vaughan and I've taken over Grant's YouTube channel just for this video to go over some really useful tips and tricks for visual effects in Blender. I work full time as a VFX artist for one of the biggest VFX companies in the world called The Mill. I've had the opportunity to work on a huge number of really well known commercials, video games, cinematics, music videos, and although professionally I'm predominantly a new compositor, I've managed to put some Blender into a large number of the projects that I've worked on. Outside of my day job, I also have my own YouTube channel where I create interesting visual effects videos and short films, usually followed by some sort of breakdown or a tutorial on how I did it. Some of my most popular videos have been superhero based effects like Iron Man and Thor. And all of what you're looking at now was done in Blender. So anyway, let's talk about some useful tips and tricks for doing visual effects in Blender. Tip number one is working with multi-layer EXRs. Working with EXR sequences is standard for high-end professional visual effects projects. For starters, they have very low compression, so your footage doesn't lose too much quality as it's going through the various phases of being worked on as a VFX shot. But secondly, EXRs can store many more channels than the standard red, green, blue and alpha channels you find in most formats like PNG or JPEG. The main benefit of this is that in compositing, you have an enormous amount of control over your 3D renders and it allows you to make very intricate changes without having to re-render your shot from Blender. For example, EXRs contain the emission data from your Blender scene, which will allow you to isolate any objects with light emitting materials in Blender. From there, you can add things like glows, flickers and lens flares to really enhance the look of your shot. Another example of a really useful channel is the glossy channel. This gives you direct control over the colour and intensity of the reflections in your render while you're still compositing it. A quick side note, if you're interested in visual effects and Blender, you might also be interested in a course I've been working on that's just gone into early access on Teachable. The course focuses on going from start to finish, covering the whole process of creating a visual effects shot. Right from the first step of processing the footage into an image sequence to use in Blender, all the way through 3D tracking, physics simulations, lighting, rendering and finally compositing. The aim was to show every step of the process so that anyone who goes through the course will have a good understanding of the entire pipeline afterwards. As I mentioned, it's currently in early access until the 1st of March. There's a link in the description that will give you an additional discount on top of it being an early access price. With that link, the current price for the next week will be $12, and once the course goes fully live, it will be $114, so it's worth grabbing it early if you're interested. Check out the link below which will take you to the course page and apply the discount. Tip number two is painting out the sun from an HDRI. HDRIs are a great way to get extremely realistic lighting in your shot very quickly. If you've done any visual effects shots before, you're probably already familiar with using them. However, one very well kept secret that I picked up from a 3D artist at work is that it's quite common to paint the sun out of an HDRI. The reason for this is you can then add a specific sun lamp in Blender and have control over its intensity and softness completely independently from the HDRI. The main benefit of this is being able to have the ambient lighting and all the nice colours from the HDRI while having totally separate control over the direction of the sun, so you can move the sun without rotating the HDRI. It's really easy to do this in Blender. Bring the HDRI into Blender's image editor, change into paint mode, you can then select the clone brush and set the HDRI as your image in the menu on the right hand side. This will then allow you to move the HDRI in whatever direction you want, and you can use it to duplicate a part of the sky over the top of the sun to paint it out. Once you've painted over it, you might need to use the blur and smear tools to smooth it out slightly. This is me flicking between two scene setups. One is using the original HDRI with the sun still in it, and the other one has the sun painted out and I'm using a sun lamp in Blender to control the softness of the shadows and the intensity and color of the light. When it comes to things like lighting your shots, the more control you have the better, so this is a really handy tip. Tip number three is using motion vectors to do motion blur in compositing. Motion blur can add quite a bit of time to your 3D renders, and it's especially disappointing when you leave a long render going, and then when you get to compositing, you realize the motion blur was a bit too strong or too weak. By that point, unfortunately, your only choice is to render it again, as the motion blur is baked into the render. However, you can render a separate pass called motion vectors that will allow you to output the movement data of everything in your render to an RGB visualization of the movement. Compositing softwares can then use this pass to apply the motion blur to your objects after the render stage. The key benefit of this is you can tweak how much motion blur you want on your renders in compositing and you don't have to render your scene again. If you're working with EXRs like I mentioned earlier, you can include the motion vector pass in your multi-channel EXR sequence, which means you don't even have to do any additional rendering. So there we go, those are three tips that I think a lot of people aren't aware of and should hopefully find really useful. Once again, the link to the Blender Visual Effects course is in the description. As long as you check it out before the 1st of March, you'll be entitled to a really big discount, so it's worth grabbing it while it's cheap. Thanks very much for watching.